Welcome. The topic of this video is how to run polygenic risk score comparison. Until now, we already have uh, watched the individual talk on PRSCS, LDPR2, and SBSR, and other methods. I believe you all have a good understanding about polygenic score and each of those methods. So this slide here is just to set up the scene to make sure that we are all on the same page. Polygenic risk score of an individual is a weighted sum of the counties of risk allele. So based on the GWAS summer statistical results, the basic method for polygenic risk score is p-value clumping and thresholding. This method is simple, but it doesn't formally uh, model different genetic architecture. So there are many new methods try to model the genetic architecture for the trade of interest. For example, using different pressures in the Bayesian regression, like uh, LD pred infinitesimal model, LD pred 2 SBC, PRSCS, and SBSR. And also, method like uh, Lasso sum is using the Lasso regression. A mega PRS is another method. It runs on different pressures. For example, if it runs on a prior using a mixture of four normal distribution, it will be the same like SBSR or similar. And if assume all the SNP have a contribution to the phenotype variance, then it will be similar to LD prior infinitesimal model or S blob. It can also run a prior like both uh, similar like both LM and also can run lots of some regression. So the difference between mega PRS and other method is the expected per SNP heritability can vary between um, can vary by LD and manual frequency. So in this talk, we will compare all of those methods, and we know that when the method is proposed, they already compared with other methods, but the fundamental question we are trying to answer here is which method should we use in the PGC data? Then we use the course validation. We want a cohort out course validation to, uh, to answer this question and to compare the performance of different um, methods. Here's a toy example showing uh, for the course validation. Each cell here is one cohort and the pink cell is for the discovery cohort, and the target cell is as uh, the green cell is for the target cohort. And in first uh, first run of the analysis, we're using the four pinks um, discovery cohort as a discovery set, and then validate the performance of each method in in the target um, sample. And then we repeat this process until each of those cells of each of those cohorts serve as a target cohort. If it's needed by the by the um some by the method, we have another cohort will serve as a tuning sample to select the optimal hyperparameters. So in the real data analysis, we use the uh, GWAS summer statistic from schizophrenia 2 as a discovery sample. And out of those data, we actually have access to uh, a 33 cohort where uh, the individual level genotype is available, and we use each of them as a target sample. For the tuning cohort, we use uh, these four cohorts in turn to tune the hyperparameters. And then we can predict the polygenic score into the, each of the targets sample. Uh, here we used um, three statistics to measure uh, the performance of different methods. One is uh, AUC, another one is proportion expanding uh, in the liability scale, and third one is all the ratio. I will go through uh, each of them to show how to calculate each of those uh, statistics. So first start with AUC. Here's a toy example on how to uh, calculate AUC by hand. So AUC is actually uh, short for the area under the ROC curve, which is uh, shaded by the pink here. So the ROC curve 
is made by plotting um, against the true positive rate to the false positive rates at each possible cutoff. So what that mean? It means as, assume that um, this is the density of plot for the polygenic score in the control sample. And here is for the case samples. And this vertical line is the current cutoff. And in this case, this graph can be divided into four groups and true negative, false negative, true positive, and a false positive and a true positive. And then we can calculate the proportion of each, uh, each group. And then we can calculate the true positive rates and the false positive, positive rate, which are the coordinates used in the RC curve. So in the, in the current cutoff we use here, it means that we have roughly about 17% of the cases, they, they are correctly classified as case. And then there are about 10% of control, they are wrongly classified as case, and which give us the coordinate for this dot here. And then when we vary the, this vertical line, this cutoff, we will, uh, we will get this ROC curve as shown in this slide here. And this AUC is the first statistic we use to uh, measure the performance of different methods. And the second one is variance explained in the liability scale when using a certain case control studies. So this variance is a function of variance explained in the observed scale, this R squared uh, observed case control study and uh, another two parameters, uh, C and the theta. So the variance explained on the observed scale is actually a function of two likelihood from the new model and the full, full model, which is uh, designed in these two equation. And the parameter C is a function of K, Z, and P. And this K parameter is actually the proportion of the population that are diseased is also the, means the uh, prevalence of the disease. And the Z parameter is the density at this uh, threshold T here. And this curve is a standard normal distribution. And the P is a proportion of a case in your GWAS uh, result or in your case control study. And the theta parameter is a function of the same uh, KZP and threshold T, but with different combination. So in this slide, I just give the final result of how to calculate the variance explained in the liability scale. The full derivation of this equation can be found in this reference. And the third statistic a statistic is called odds ratio. And odds ratio is a ratio between two odds. And the odds is a, a probability being a case over the prob probability being a control. So here is a, a toy example showing how to um, calculate odds ratio by hand. And the saying that we are ordering the individual based on their polygenic risk score from the lowest to highest. And we are interested in the odds ratio between the uh, 10th decile and um, first decile with the number of cases and the control shown in this table. So the odds being a case in the first decile is 23 over 103. And the odds being a case in the 10th decile is 83 divided by the 43. The odds ratio between the two decimals is 9.3. 9 so this, this value means um, when we order individual based on their polygenic score, the individual in the top 10 decimal, in the top 10% or in the 10th decimal have 9.3 uh, 
times higher of odds being a case compared to the individual in the uh, bottom 10%. And this uh, this odds ratio can be easily estimated from the logistic regression using the logic uh, link function. So using the um, U1 cohort strategy, we can access the AUC variance explain and odds ratio for each of those target cohort. And here it shows the result for AUC and for cohort of each method and different colors here stand for different methods we used. And the Y axis here is a EUC difference compared to the P plus T, which is a benchmark we used. And as you can see, of course, different validation cohort, there are lots of variations. And that's why we think our comparison is more robust compared to uh, other comparison when, when they are only use one uh, target cohort. If we summarize this uh, bar plot by each uh, group by method, we can see we can observe this bar plot. The y-axis here is AUC and each of the groups stand for each of the method we, we compared. And each of the bar in each of the groups stand for different uh, tuning cohort we use. And we noticed that the methods that are formally modeled different genetic architecture, uh, they actually have a quite similar performance. This is because the genetic architecture of psychiatric disorders, they are quite polygenic. If we look at the results for the Alzheimer's disease, which is less polygenic compared to um, psychiatric disorder, we will observe a big difference across different methods. And then we also observed a similar pattern for our variance explained in the liability scale and all the ratio between the top 10% and the bottom 10%, also the odds ratio between top 10% and medium. But uh, we observe that LDPR2, SBSR, and MegaPRS, they rank the highest amongst, uh, in most of the comparison. And to summarize, in this talk, I show how to calculate AUC variance explaining uh, liability, liability scale and odds ratio by hand. And based on the comparison we made, we observe that for uh, security disorders, which are uh, very polygenic. All the methods are performed similar, but some are, are rank higher than others. For example, LDPR2, SBSR, and MegaPRS. So the result I show here is part of uh, this study, which is published uh, recently published. And in this paper, we also did a comparison for major depression and also other sensitivity analysis. And we also uh, provide the code for each to run each of method and for each uh, comparison, and also each of the statistics statistic used for comparison. And with this, I would like to give a big thank you to Professor Naomi Ray, who always gave me a huge support whenever I need it. And uh, uh, thanks to all other PCTG members. And thank you all. <laughs>